Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And good morning to those of you that have managed to get on at home. I know there's been an issue, so well done if you've managed to get on. Otherwise, hello to everybody that's watching it on the recording. So if you just please be seated for a few notices before we sing our first hymn. First of all, our next PCC meeting of the new PCC will be on June the 23rd. And that, that meeting will be confirming the sides people for the next year. So if you are already a sides person, please, can you confirm that you're happy to continue with Judith? And if anybody is willing to volunteer, please let Judith know. There is a rota, you won't be on every week, but it'd be really helpful if we could get a few more volunteers. So if you speak to Judith after the service, thank you. And also Sharon is doing some work with the Cop Gardening community and the school. Uh, the children have already done a great job of clearing up some of the areas outside, but she's actually put a list at the back of church with volunteer jobs. So if you feel you have the skills and are able to help with that, either put your name down or speak to Sharon if you're unsure after the service. Thank you. So the services this evening, we have 6.30, we have evening prayer. And then next Sunday, we have 11 o'clock, we have morning prayer and 6.30, we have vestry praise. And everybody's, of course, welcome. And then Tuesday prayer meeting, sorry, Tuesday Bible Sunday and Wednesday prayer meeting on the Zoom online, access via the website. And God willing, it'll be up and running by then. So we'll start our service with first some words, words from scripture. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. We shall sing our first hymn, which is hymn number 237, as it's Trinity Sunday, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
and we will follow the service in the yellow service book. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give us the joy of your saving help and to save us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand so let us turn away from our sin and turn to christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith sitting or kneeling as we pray the words on the top of the second prayer thank you lord god we have sinned against you we have done evil in your sight we are sorry and repent have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he then, <clears throat> which he took from the, from the temple. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this, this has touched your lips, your, your guilt is taken away, and your sins atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now stand and sing our next hymn, which is hymn number 139. <laughs>
please be seated for our second reading. The second reading is from the book of Revelation and is chapter four. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. A rainbow resembling an em emerald encircled the, th the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne, were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front and behind. The, hook, the first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The, her, the third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor and thanks to him, who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being being this is the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god good morning everybody good morning lovely to see you Great that we can be together on this Trinity Sunday. Do you like eggs? <laughs> Do you like eggs? Anybody not like eggs? Till about five or six years ago, I didn't like eggs officially. Um, I, I think I must have had a bad experience with them when I was young. Um, my mother trying to force feed me. Um, <laughs> or I, no. That's uh, that's not true, but um, we did have to eat everything up, or we didn't get anything else until we had eaten up. Um, yeah, but the thing is that since I was very young, uh, I hadn't eaten an egg. Uh, and, uh, well, I do still think, actually, that uh, the smell of a boiled egg 
is one of the worst smells in the world. <coughs> um, but uh, it was about, uh, yeah, probably six years ago or something like that. I was in Tanzania and uh, I was visiting uh, another church. And usually after the service, they would uh, welcome you for chat, tea. Um, and we'd all sit around and uh, we had tea. And so often they, were, they would bring either small cakes or some other food. Sometimes it was a big meal. This time, at the church that I was going to, they brought round boiled eggs. <laughs> hmm. Nothing else, no alternative. And I couldn't refuse. So I thought, I'm going to have to eat this boiled egg. I, yeah, and I treated it a bit like radioactive <laughs> waste <laughs> or whatever. But then I took a bite and thought, oh, oh, actually, I think I can eat this. And as I ate it, I thought, oh, actually, this isn't too bad at all. And uh, boiled eggs being the worst type of egg, I thought, well, I can eat any type of egg. Um, and that has transformed my life. <laughs> 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 because today, quite often, I, I, I still rarely have boiled eggs, um, but uh, scrambled eggs, great. Uh, fried eggs, yes. But most of all, omelettes. An omelette is just a fantastic meal, and it's so easy. And because we have such fresh eggs around here, and uh, they're all readily available, um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's made my life much better. <laughs> <laughs> I think that my attitude towards X is a bit like a lot of people's attitude towards God. Maybe they've had a bad experience of him in their early life. Maybe. They've just not known. Maybe they've never done what the psalmist says, to taste and see that the Lord is good. And what we've seen today in our, our, our two readings is that two people taste and see that the Lord is good. And... Um, we, we have in the Old Testament, we have Isaiah. In the New Testament, it's John, who in the book of Revelation, gives this strange and wonderful vision. Um, and now, I don't really particularly want to look at uh, Revelation today. <laughs> Suffice to say that it's not a physical description, but it's a figurative description. Um, he's not telling us exactly what it looks like, but he is telling us something about God. Um, Isaiah is a bit more easy and a bit more accessible to us. And um, it's, today is, today is uh, the uh, Feast of the Trinity. Uh, and it's the, uh, it's the traditional day <laughs> when um, people like me who preach try and tie ourselves into knots to explain the inexplicable. The Trinity, we will never fully understand. One God in three persons. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that here in uh, Isaiah, we see the three persons exactly, but really, in God, we do meet Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what we see in Isaiah is that God comes to Isaiah. God comes 
and gives him a vision of himself. Isaiah says, um, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Again, not physically, because God is spirit. But in a vision, Isaiah saw the Lord. And he tells us almost nothing about him. <laughs> Do you notice the description is, is not really about God? Uh, he doesn't say he has a big white beard and a cheerful smile and rosy cheeks and that kind of thing. He says, I saw the Lord high and exalted and the train of his robe filled the temple. So the Lord is above and he's lifted up. That's what exalted means. And he's up there right in front of Isaiah's view. But the train of his robe, the, 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 maybe the least significant thing about God is what fills the temple. That's a picture that in the temple, yes, we meet with God, but it's, it's not a complete meeting with him. Or well, that's the way it was in the Old Testament. Um, and where we see um, things about God, what we see is these two, uh, these four creatures, as they were in Revelation. We get more detail there. Uh, and they are worshipping God. They're calling, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Um, and in response to that, we see what happens is that at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook. <clears throat> and Isaiah stood there outside. And smoke fills the temple. Um, and that, again, is a picture to us. God is unapproachable to human beings. When the doorposts are shaking, you don't go into a building. You're going to get crushed by it. You cannot approach God. And Isaiah's response to that is, woe is me. I can't approach God. And the reason he can't approach God is, he says, I am ruined. For I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Isaiah sees what the, these creatures have described, the holiness of God. <coughs> and the glory of God. And he realizes that he is not holy. He is unclean. He is unworthy to come before God. But the second thing that God does is that he cleans us. And so um, one of the seraphs um, flew with a live coal from the altar, um, and he touches Isaiah's lips. It's a symbol of being made clean. And as a result of that, Isaiah is transformed. Isaiah 
is completely different. Because the third thing that God does is he calls. And he says to Isaiah, who's going to go for us? Who's going to tell the people about me? <clears throat> and Isaiah, who just then has been saying, oh, woe is me, I'm ruined. He says, here I am, here I am, send me. Because God has changed him. Because God has made him clean. Because he is now near to the Lord. And that's what God does. God, the Holy Trinity, does for each of us. God comes to us. God came to us in Christ Jesus. St. Paul says that in Jesus dwelt the fullness of God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. If we want to know what God is like, we look at Jesus. And Jesus has come to us. And we know him through God's word. <clears throat> and today, the Holy Spirit comes to us. God comes to us. God cleans us from our sin, from our unworthiness, from our lack of holiness. God cleans us through the blood of Jesus, by the power of his spirit. We are unworthy but he makes us worthy. And God calls us to go for him. And Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go and make disciples. Show people, tell people, what I am like and what I have done for you and for all people, that everyone may know the fullness of God themselves. And so for us today on this Trinity Sunday, God comes to us, God calls us, uh, God cleans us and God calls us. Um, I, I want to uh, tell you about uh, tell you about uh, me and eggs. Let me tell you about me and God, because I grew up with God. I grew up in the church, but I was quite distant, really, in a way, until um, after I was confirmed, <clears throat> um, <laughs> which is which is uh, quite a confession. <clears throat> After I was confirmed, I had the privilege, the 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 uh, real honour it was of being able to go to youth club at church, which was really exciting. On a, a, a Saturday evening, there was table tennis, there was badminton, there was a disco. <clears throat> My goodness, and lots of people went there. Um. And it's not through youth club, but rather through the leaders of the youth club that I came to know God. Through them, I could see how they lived what they believed. They served others. They gave themselves to each other. And they loved everyone who came in. And it was through their example and through their teaching and through their praying that I came 
to know God myself. And God, the Father, who comes to us through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, has made me clean. And it makes all of us clean if we will trust in him and has called me and goes with me as I do my work, as I see other people. And God isn't always that clear in me, I know, <laughs> because I am a fallen human being. But I do believe that God is in each of us who believe in him and works through us who believe in him and continues to come to us, to clean us and to call us day by day to live his life, to do his will and to bring others to know him. And I pray that this is what we will do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul, for the challenge. Uh, now I shall stand and sing our next hymn, which is hymn number 827, mm -hmm. Father of Heaven, whose love profound. <laughs> And now let us confirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered at the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us turn to our time of prayer. Let us pray. The responses this morning are, Lord, in your mercy, and the responses hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy. First, the colic special prayer for today, Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and comforter. Here in this place and at this time, we offer our thanks. Among the busyness and bustle of the world, still our clamoring hearts, that we may sit with devotion in your presence. Keep our ears open to your call. Keep our hearts open to your love. Make our minds sensitive to your coming, that we may rejoice that we dwell in you and you are in us. Most gracious Father God, full of compassion and tender mercy, we come to you in our weakness, make us strong. We come in need of forgiveness. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for all that spoils us. We come needing light on our perplexities. Give us eyes to see what we ought to do. We come with our fears. Dissolve them in your love. We need healing. Make us whole again. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you for Jesus, his courage in his ministry, his courage when opposition was strong, his courage at the temple court, his courage in the garden of Gethsemane and before Pilate, his courage on the cross. Give us courage too, Lord, the courage of our feelings, the courage of our convictions, the courage to be a minority of one. Give us courage when adversity comes to us, courage in the crisis, courage to bear pain, and courage to begin again when some ventures have failed. Lord Jesus, you faced up to evil, even though it cost you your earthly life to conquer it. Give us wisdom to know when we must stand up for our principles and give us courage to stand firm in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks for our church and this your congregation. Bring us insight and inspiration so that we can know your presence and worship your majesty. Let our church be a place where all are welcome, visit a stranger, young and old, and where you are present in all our activities. God of mercy, whose amazing grace empowers us to follow your son's ways, set out your requirements of us, however difficult they may be. We know that through your church and with the help of your Holy Spirit, we can rise to the challenges we face. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We give you thanks for those who have revealed your presence and love to us, for those who have guided us into the ways of truth, 
We pray for those who influence the minds of our young people, for schools, youth groups, colleges and universities. Praying especially for our own young people, Ingrid Eccleston, Ellswick and Larbreck, and also for the staff and pupils of Cop School. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all the areas of the world which are torn apart by hatred and violence, famine, disaster, or religious differences. We pray for the end of war and a deeper commitment to peace. And we remember especially the people of Ukraine. We pray for all the oppressed peoples of the world, for all who have lost their freedom and hope, for all who have had to leave their home for whatever reason and now find themselves homeless. In the darkness, may they find your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Trinity, we pray for those in our church community who are in urgent need of our prayers at this time. For the sick, bring them healing. For the injured, bring them a swift recovery. For the depressed, bring them hope. For the bereaved, bring them comfort. Remember in a few moments of quiet those known to us. We pray especially for Helen, Ian, Terry, and the family of all those involved in the road traffic accident on Friday. We ask that in the depths of suffering, they find the wellspring of your grace. And in the process of recovery, they find the warmth of caring love from family, friends, neighbors, and above all, from our creator, redeemer, and comforter. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks for your redeeming love and liberating power that you free us from the powers of evil, sin and death and open up for us the glory of your kingdom. We pray for all who have died and are now at peace. May we rejoice with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your love knows no bounds. So we give you our thanks. Your hope lifts our spirits. So we give you our hearts. Your son saved us from our sins. So we give you our souls. Your spirit gives us life. So we live life abundantly. May we live in peace, love in peace, hope in peace and rest in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior and gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we shall now sing our final offertory hymn, which is in number 699.
Loving Father, bless the gifts we have offered. Bless the work we will do. Bless all our endeavours and small contributions and transform them into fruit that endures. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, please do join us for tea and coffee if you can um, in the school hall. But as we close, a final prayer. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Amen.